Okay, so as the title may tell you, today we're going to be making a rotoscoping filter. Now, a filter can never do what hand-drawn rotoscoping can, but it's much easier and it's much faster and it's a better solution for anybody who doesn't have 30 people and years of time to spend making something look like a scanner darkly, for example. So let's begin. Okay, so now all we're going to do is open up our video in QuickTime Pro. Just find the video and open it. Now, the next thing we're going to do is to save the video out as an image sequence. And to do that, you need to go to File, and then Export. And then, when it brings you the Export menu, you're going to click Movie to Image Sequence. And just use the default settings and be sure to make a folder to put all of this in because there will be many many images name it and save it and uh, that will go for about five minutes and then we'll pick up with the next part of the tutorial so now what we're going to do is we're going to take all of the images you just created with that export and we're going to edit them and filter them using photoshop and so what you're going to need to do is go to the folder that you had all of the images in and copy one of the images. It doesn't matter which, just do the first one, it's easiest. And to c we need to copy this because we need a test image to try all of the filter settings and make sure everything looks correct and we can get the filter working. So copy it and then open the copy with Photoshop. Okay, so here's our image in Photoshop, and now what we have to do is make sure we have our action toolbar open, and it is under Window, and make sure that you have the action toolbar open, which is it will show up in the top right corner of the screen. Once you have that good, you need to go over to the action toolbar, and on a, bu a button in the bottom says Make New Action, and you need to make a new action, and it'll automatically start recording that action to the image you have open. And so name your action and push OK. And then all you have to do now is apply a couple filters to the picture and you can create your action. And so first you have to do artistic and then poster edges. The edge thickness needs to be 6, the edge intensity needs to be 0, and the posterization needs to be set to 2 to get the best rotoscoping look with this filter. Once you have that, push OK and filter the image. Then the next filter we're going to do is stylize and then diffuse. And when you click on the diffuse filter, you are going to need to make it anastropic. And that'll give you the best looking diffuse you need to do for this. After we apply the diffuse filter, we're going to need to apply another artistic filter called dry brush. And for that, the best settings are brush size and brush detail at 10 and texture at 1. And those settings give it a very clean cutout color look. The last thing we need to do is do the exact same diffuse filter again, all the same settings, and that will just make the image appear a lot more smooth and get rid of a lot of the hard edges that we just created. Then we need to save the image so the action can know to save all of its images that it does, and then we close out of the image so the action knows to close the image. Then all you have to do is stop recording the action, and the action will be saved so that Photoshop can filter every frame in the same way. Now delete that file that you just made and edited because it was a copy and we were just testing with it and Photoshop will get confused if you use it. And after you delete that, you need to open up the first frame of your real sequence with Photoshop 
and then go to automate batch and when you get to automate batch it's going to ask you what tool you what action you want to use and when you s pick which action all you have to do is pick the action you just created whatever you named it and then it'll ask you from where and you'll tell it to pick a folder and then you can choose which folder you've contained all of your images in and it's as simple as that and you just hit go Once you hit OK, it's going to take a very, very, very long time to render. It takes about an hour to render a minute of footage. So go do something, watch TV, because you don't want to sit here and watch Photoshop do its thing. When you come back and see that Photoshop has done its thing, uh, we're ready for the final step of the process. And to do this, we need to remake the video with the new footage. So open QuickTime Player and open the original video that you exported all the frames from. And what we need to do now is extract the audio from that so we have an audio track for the video you just made. All you have to do is go to File, Export, and then once you go to the export menu instead of picking movie to image sequence you'll do movie to AIFF audio it's as simple as that and click OK name it what you want to name it I just named mine audio and it's very easy Now that we have our new audio track and the uh, all the still frames we just filtered with Photoshop, it's time to combine that into one movie and end this entire process. So open up QuickTime Pro and do open image sequence. And I can't tell you what frame rate that you uh, had your original video at, but whatever frame rate you had your original video at, be sure to select that, otherwise the audio and the video will be out of sync. And all you have to do is pick the first frame in your sequence, give it the frame rate, and push OK. And it'll take a while, but eventually it'll open up your movie as a movie, not just as a sequence of images, but it won't have audio, and that's why we need to add the audio. So, there you have it. There's your movie in all of its rotoscoped awesomeness. And all you need to do to add the audio back to it is open a finder window and click once on the audio that you just exported. And all you need to do is then go to edit and push um, add and scale. And when you click that, it'll just throw the audio right into the video and everything, if you pick the right frame rate, should be in sync. So now you can watch your movie and see how great it is and see how awesome it looks when it's rotoscoped instead of live action. And then to finish the process, all you have to do is save. And there you have it. That is how to make a rotoscope filter and make your movie. This is Cartman is God 20415, and that's been a rotoscope filter tutorial.